Welcome to Mel's Mountain Garage. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. If it's your first time here and you like the video, please support the channel, hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave me some comments. It's greatly appreciated. This time around, I'm going to work on Walter, my 2002 club car, DS. The front suspension is really worn out. I mean, it's, it's, the wheel's almost falling off. I'll pull the camera off here shortly, jack it up in the air, and we'll get at it. Well, with Walter up in the air, I'll zoom in here on the camera, but you can see the tie rods, they're all worn out, and then the kingpin and the kingpin bushings are all worn out, upper control arm bushings. So we're gonna pull the wheel wheels off, and start tearing at this. It's not terribly difficult, especially if you have a schematic. Or if you take your time. I fortunately hit the interwebs from golfcartparts.com. I do have a service manual, but it's easier to just pull it up on my computer, frankly. Here are also the new parts. I ordered them off of Amazon. I don't recall what company they came through, but Amazon was the third party seller. You see I have new king pins, the upper control arm mounts, down here goes to the spring. We have all the king pin bushings, new nuts and washers and bolts and hardware. This is for the lower spring eye, and then these are for the upper control arms. These are poly bushings. Should firm the front end up pretty nice. I am waiting on a FedEx guy to get my three tie rod ends. But by the time I tear into this, they should be here. With our wheels off, you get a nice close look. There is our steering rack. There's our drag link or tie bar or whatever the heck you want to call it. You got our spindle here. That's our kingpin with the upper control arm like adapter. You can see all the play. It's not terribly difficult to get apart. One giant nut and bolt. Nut and bolt for the upper control arm. Same for the lower spring. Just a nut and washer for the shock. Though I don't know why there's no large washer on there. Normally there is on other stuff. These are cotter pins with castellated nuts. You can typically whack that with a hammer and pop them loose. If not, I do have a tie rod tool. The hardest part is going to be getting the bolts up in there for the upper control arm. If you don't have the schematic or you've never done it before, do one side at a time, take your time, and use the other side for reference. Everything seems to be SAE, not metric, so that's good. You can use a ratchet if that's all you have. Me, I have pneumatic tools, so, or electric tools, pneumatic tools. So, using a <clears throat> Using these, it's a lot faster. Oh, no harm, no foul. Unless you're reusing your old track, then you don't want to do that. There's the oldies. You see they're all worn out. Outside is this tie rod is so jacked up. 
the whole thing spins on a nut. Hopefully the hole's not hogged out in the, in the spindle. Let's get on the bench. All right, with the setup on the bench, let's get the right side socket first. Now the impact. It's a heck of a nylock. When it's pulling apart, you can see this washer. You can tell there's no, you can, well, not can tell, you can see there's no groove on it. Oh no, there's a groove. I wonder if it was assembled the right way up. We'll find out. Spindles off. <clears throat> Here's the old tie rod. Or old kingpin, rather. <clears throat> Don't mind if you hear my breathing. I'm super congested. There's the bottom. Flip her around. See if I can get the top one just as easy. There you go. Boom. All right. Now it's all out. I'll clean her up. We'll do that off camera. I'm not going to get real crazy. Just get all the grease out of it. It's going right in the mud anyways. We'll be back. Well, the old bushing's out. I got a brand new tuba. Ran tacky grease here. I cleaned the old grease out of the spindle. Using our diagram. The shouldered bushing goes on the bottom i am going to get her tapped start with a mallet i do have a press you can certainly use a press but i don't want to right now Not entirely sure what these bushings are made out of, but I can tell you if you hit them with a regular steel hammer, you will break them. They're like the door pin uh, hinge bushings. The bottom one doesn't have a, or the top one rather, I'm sorry, doesn't have a shoulder <clears throat> on it Boom. now that's in there we can pull this get our new spindle <clears throat> Give her a little bit of grease. I didn't want to grease it when it's assembled with some uh, Lucas Red and Tacky here. That wave washer goes on there first. And since I was having a hard time, I that in got this replacement <clears throat> flat washer it's got grooves on both sides to help distribute the grease when you pump the grease that guy goes this guy goes here nut lock washer 
You want to line these up so the bolt holes <clears throat> are parallel to one another. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. Ooh, no slop there, buddy. Spindle assembly is done. With our control arms out. No, well, control arm. Since the other one is done. <clears throat> A couple ways to go about this, but it's whatever way that works. Now our arm is empty. I have pipe wire brushes just to get all the crap out of there. Any dust, dirt. Same thing with this side. I'd like to say I Clean my workbench real good, real good for you guys before I start filming, but I'd be lying. Now with these, <clears throat> excuse me, bushings being polyurethane, you don't want to use a petroleum-based lubricant or grease because it will make them bushings mush. <clears throat> Get yourself a silicon-based grease. Uh, Silglide is, is one. Um, there's a bunch out there. I mean, you can buy the right for Prothane companies like that. Me, I'm just using regular old Permatex tune up grease, dielectric grease. It's a silicon based grease, and it won't burn these out. Put a little grease in there. This way here it doesn't squeak. To be honest with you, I don't think you'd. Hear it in my cart around here on Mel's Mountain Garage. If that's okay. Let's see where we go. All right. So before we put it back on the cart, I'll lube both sides of the bush. Now, a little tip, you'll notice that these shafts do not have splines on them and the body doesn't have splines like an automobile. If it did and had splines or serrated edges, you'd have to tighten these bushings down with the weight of the vehicle on a control arm or else they'd come apart and bind. These, you don't have to worry about that. You can tighten them wherever and they'll move freely. So with that, Let's get this set up so we can put it back in the cart. I was incorrect earlier when I stated that they sent me new bolts because they did not. I just have got, I've got new nylocks. So, when you're taking out your bolts, be careful and don't jack them all up. Put your front bolt in first. Same thing with the rear, the lower spring eye. Put a little bit of grease in there. I cleaned it out with a brush. I noticed, and I don't know if it's because the spring eye is worn out or that's by design, but there is a little, they're not as tight fitting as I would have liked. But it's fine, I suppose. They give us new nylocks with the kit. So, nylock for the upper, 
new nylocks for the control arms. The shock, unfortunately, has to have a lock nut since there isn't enough threads on there. These bolts are different sizes. The lower one needs to be the longer one. Put some lube in there. Get this one up here. You notice there's some slot between it all. So we're gonna send it home with the impact. Make sure it's nice and tight. I like to count the turns. I already loosened it, as you see. Got a chuck and a vise. One, 11, 12, 12. One, two, 11, 12. Rinse and repeat. Do yourself a solid and get that hole lined up. So you can get the cotter key, cotter pin in there. Well, we got it all back together. I'm still gotta snug the wheels up when I get it on the floor. You don't want to use an impact gun because those hubs are aluminum and you can mess them up, but and that little bit of slop is within any movement that's allowed. So the wheel is going back and forth. Boom. Once I grease it, we'll take it for a ride. Then I'll set the tie rods to get the steering wheel straight. Once I get that, then I'll set the toe and the front end is sorted out. I do have replacement headlights. I don't know if you caught that, but the headlights are all beat up. Yeah, sometimes I crash into stuff. All right, we'll take it for a road test. Front end's nice and tight. Oh, shit. Got her all creased up. Steer's a little stiff. To be expected, though, with the pink pin pushies being brand new. Boy, I ran a little bit, get some slob in it. Steer's pretty straight. Well, I hope this video helped you out a little bit. Not terribly difficult. You can do it with basic standard hand tools, hammer, you need a jack to get it up in the air unless you're strong and you just lift it up and put it on blocks or something. I thought it was a heck of an improvement driving around the land here on a mountain. My kids treat this like a four-wheeler, so it's beat up. But again, thanks for checking out my video. Thanks for coming to my channel. If you like my content, subscribe, help support the channel. I like to get my subscriber list, you know, to grow. And with any kind of luck, sometime in the future this year, we'll start doing some filming from the new Mel's Mountain Garage. Right now, I'm running through what we call Tech City. So, I'm working on a new shop, and you can see it right there. I may do a video on this later, and that white stuff is foam insulation board. But, that is the new Mel's Mountain Garage. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave me some comments, good or bad. I appreciate it. You got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'm usually good with answering them. See you soon.